Welcome back. Seen quite some some action here close. How much time we got? Five minutes. Five minutes. Basically, I mean we haven't even really gotten into some sort of take profit, so we've been trading flat since the melt up into lunch. Uh not seeing it anywhere. Not seeing it on uh, the growth side either so uh, finishing very strong which would be if we're finishing strong today then we're we're not expecting a take profit day tomorrow or we're at the very least expecting higher higher open right futures are going to be opening higher something to do with asia was not open they're going to be opening you know today in in our in our night for their open uh probably suspecting quite a bit of growth to come in there so you're seeing some of that at close it would be again there's gonna be some short-term bets here betting on tomorrow so i would say some of that here is in relation uh when you think of take a look at travel travel has held this value all day it opened very high it's continued to hold it so that would have been one of the things today in terms of volatility to see for close things like airlines here a little bit further down but still up uh, quite a bit from the open so this is kind of interesting, but it is notable that uh, these have held there. Google continues in the close. So 420, 420 on the day. Insane. Obviously, the we we can say the antitrust case thing all we want, but we we already knew. It's not it, it's not like news as in oh this is news to everybody. I mean. Is it, is, is it news to us? Wasn't, didn't that already happen? Didn't we actually go up? Didn't we increase 6% when we first heard about the case? <laughs> does, it, does it really matter? Right. So the news part, making it look more than it is. Just risk on, right? Uh, RXT today was one of the interesting charts from, uh, that I posted from the weekend. Uh, Facebook, our other big growth, our first growth ticker continues today as well. So uh, not... What's important here is to see at close is that this is not taking profit on close. Uh, had some nice action during during lunch and coming into close, but there, there's not a take profit close. So, I mean, that's notable. It's certainly notable. Um, a, a couple of things to talk about VRM. VRM from the from the support was a nice buy. ABTR from yesterday. I was gonna bring this up in chat uh, when this came through. Uh, this is a really nice move from here, which this thing does not move very much. So. This is a very much a yes no trade. Again, open on support. This was resistance. Opened as support, pulled down, pushed through the trend line. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at that. I mean, we're looking at it right now. There you go. A lot of action into the into the open. Here you go. Coming through the trend line as if nothing happened, and a, a lot of bid here at close as you get back into the channel. That that makes a, a ticker like this very interesting to trade. Not many points, but I mean, it technically is. EI coming up to the level. minutes i'm 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 literally doing nothing at close so nothing at all it's some some of the some of the top of the list uh older tickers are putting more points on uh, i talked about bios a little bit there there's been a few there's been quite a few uh, and i talked about it earlier that if you take if you have taken profits or like for instance i got stopped out of things that open uh those bios that start to make the moves you can be late on them and chase them and take them as just a day trade or something right i have a few of those um we don't know they need to go into them but there were opportunities like that today and i'm sure it'll continue through the week so you know anything that looks like this it's just you see the same thing every time where you come out of the top of range go into the high start trading I talked about bj earlier that's continued this is holding the value still right you get these big uh bid days Th these are the same orders going through on these charts uh, and it continues, and they keep holding value. That's the only thing that matters. Uh, I'm going to talk about F uh, once it closes over. But it looks very good. Very good. Closing right now. couple seconds. Completely flat. Completely flat. What a day. What a start to the week. A continue it. It's almost like the weekend never happened, and the holiday never happened. It, it almost looks like a, it, it just... It quite literally picked up where it left off. 
uh, just plus a few extra points on the open, right? Plus a few points on the open. Uh, what I would say is if you, this is, again, we talk about this confirmation idea. If you did not enter, at least at the end of last week on Thursday, you had a very hard time today, probably. Even though it's very straight, I mean, it's just everything went up, right? Oh, yeah, everything's green. Great. That's, it's not as simple as that, right? So, again, this is why we enter before. We're betting on equities to go up. Okay, they went up today. Well, how would you have taken advantage of today? Well, you would have needed to be in position. And so this is why we do what we do. You have to get into a position so that you, today you can just literally sit around, dick around, do nothing. And at the very most, uh, you get stopped out of some bets, but almost everything went up. So you're only managing positions and looking to take profit if need be, right? In most situations, you didn't. But again, there were those positions that came down, solar and things like that you had to manage. But you had to, the story is you had to be in. That's why we started back here, pushing that position. Okay, hindsight capital. Yeah, we can be like, well, duh, of course we pushed this position. No, it was not easy to push through all this. But we talked about it. We're going to push these winnings because we're not betting on just, oh, yeah, price will come back to the high. No, we're betting on price to go past the high, continue to create new all-time highs. We're not going to guess the top of the new all-time high. Imagine if we tried to guess the top every single time. This is price just going through all-time high, going through all-time high, all-time high, all-time high. What are we going to guess the top on every candle? I mean, you just wait for it. It'll happen. It's not going to, I mean, it's not like a plane coming down. Uh, it, it's not, it, it's not an elevator. It's not going to just instantly fall, right? You're going to have time. And especially, especially since it's so growth oriented, coming, coming on sort of a rebound with mega caps. The big difference here, this move, the only reason this average is moving is because of mega caps and they are leading, they are leading uh, out of here. Now, there, there is this, what makes it really difficult here is that we're saying equities are risk on and the whole market's moving. And so what's very sneaky here is value. This is over 1% again today on the Dow. This is such a sneaky candle in here that, and I talked about it from open, this was leading on the open. The Dow was leading, all of the Dow companies were leading on the open. Now, yes, yes, the <laughs> Apple, Apple and Apple and Microsoft are in the Dow, right? And it's it's got it's just an average of all of equities. So if we're betting on all equities, Dow should go up, right? It's not just value. It's it's got everything in there, right? Well, this candle is super sneaky. And the top tickers in the Dow were not the tech tickers. They're not. I mean, you can you can call it that, sure, but that's not specifically what's moving this. It's everything together, right? And so this is this is again where Okay, we finally we were correct this time, right? That tech and growth did not get negatively affected by yields increasing. Yields were up. Yields were up today because of more spending, right? And so again, S and P. So it goes Dow, then the S and P, and then the Nasdaq. It's really important because again, this is gonna it's gonna be so easy to. Yes, we're betting on everything together, but it's important that we still have some sort of uh, we're conscious of of what is the best opportunity. And so when we're in positions, you know what's a lot easier to manage? Is a fucking position that's in a Dow-oriented shape and not just all growth. Why? Because growth gets negatively affected a lot easier. So as you gain the reward, right? You could gain the same reward on any of those Dow tickers as you do on any NASDAQ tickers on, on the growth side. But the difference there is that there's a lot more risk involved with this move on the NASDAQ coming out of this rebound, on some of those mega caps especially, more risk involved there than on this move. Completely different risk. And you're getting the same reward. So if someone's going to pay you the same amount of money, right? If I'm handing you a let's well, let's say a nice, beautiful woman, you know, she looks great, you're on the beach, she's going to offer you a million dollars. Are you going to take the million dollars from her or this guy that looks fucking scary? He could be the boogeyman. Both of them are offering you a million dollars, but this guy wants you to get into his van and to get the million dollars. Okay, both of them are going to give me a million dollars, but I'm probably not going to get the million from, uh, from the scary dude, right? The creepy guy. Bad analogy, but that's the truth. They both look good, but there's a situation still of risks. Yes, I'm all over growth, 
but I'm not going to let this, I'm not leaving in any of these positions, these long positions. I'm continuing to push these. It's really easy just to take profit and feel good. This would have been a good example is if you took profit from this last week when this was trading flat because of where growth was. And you said, well, first of all, growth was only trading flat as well. But maybe you thought, okay, this is a good example of if you took profit here, now you're like, oh, shit. This would have been probably a lot easier just to keep pushing that position, huh? You can't take it until it stops, right? And if we're betting on all equities, they're going to continue, right? This is... Uh, when you look through some of these stickers, and I just want to show some of these, like WBA, for instance, right? Retail stores continue. We mentioned a lot of retail stores today. Uh, things like Rad continuing, right? Uh, this is, this is. I mean, what is? What do they got a vaccine? Or I mean, I know they give out vaccines, but what do they get the new, the new Zoom platform, right? What, what's going on here with Walgreens, INTC? Okay, semiconductors. How did semiconductors do today? Well, let's take a look around the market. INTC, we can say, okay, NVIDIA, about a percent and a quarter. Okay, decent. AMD, basically break even. How about just the average? SMH. SMH? Okay. So the average did pretty damn good today. But how, how did INTC do? Intel destroyed it. Doubled. Doubled the amount that the average did. INTC, still, it's getting bullish because it's a semi. It's a growth, but it's also a part of the Dow, and it's not risky. There's no risk involved here because of its association right it's you're sort of got a you're being held by a somebody's hand the whole way through here this is i mean yeah this is a bit of a nightmare in here to have this candle here this was news trading right but this was good this was good for intel <laughs> so you have to look at this candle here and be like okay this is not risk actually this was a take profit from a news event that's actually good for it and so you actually didn't lose anything if you had options here as well, besides the, the price point. This is a good example again. How do you get into this today? If you, okay, you could have been in it. How did you get this today? It just was a straight line. You had to be in it. These are not positions that you can just go into. How'd you get into this today? How'd you get into Walmart? You didn't. You were already in it or you didn't get it. Microsoft. These tickers. You need to know before it happens that you're going to make these trades because some of these, again, they just run. BA, impossible. Impossible. You could not buy this today. You could not buy it today. If you're not in it, you didn't get it. How did you stay in this? I mean, it's been trending the whole time, right? I want to continue to make it because those of you that didn't, I know most everybody was taking opportunities over here and continue to push it. But just for those of you, for again, the, the critical nature of, of trading is that the longer this goes on, the harder and harder it is to get in. You can look at this day and be like, well, there's not really anything there because there is a lot there if you're already in the position, right? Two and a half percent is a shit ton on the options, but it's how, how do you get into that if you're not already in? It's so important. It's so important to realize that when there's an opportunity and there's a moment, you have to take that. You have to take what's on the table and you have to take advantage of that moment. It may not turn into something. It doesn't always, and you get stopped out. But if you don't take that, that chance that you don't take is is one you're not going to get back because it's so hard to go back in there. Look at this fucking chart. What I mean, at this point, I just have stopped looking at it because there's nothing else to do here. I'm getting it. I'm getting it more on an average because I've been doing the Dow play. But I mean, how do you buy this today? There's nobody in good conscience is buying this. It looks terrible on an intraday chart. It looks stupid. It literally looks dumb. I mean, you can't buy that. It's impossible. There's, that's all institution, but fill in the liquidity. There's no you, this is you. So again, I just want to really ingrain it in everyone's mind that when we have these moments and I talk about these opportunities, that is your opportunity. That is your moment. Because as soon as it comes, it's already here and it's going to be really difficult to get in. This is where the trading begins. It gets so difficult to trade and it's really important that we talk about because it it's so easy to look at it. It's so hard to get in on a day like today. And I know people had a hard fucking time because you are paying a top premium. You're paying a top premium for it for the likes of stupid tickers that have already moved and you feel bad, right? Keep that in mind because again, okay, we're taking advantage of this opportunity right now. Now, again, I talked about it this morning. We need to take advantage of this gain now as we always do. We trade the breakout and we capture the breakout and we need to make sure this doesn't slip away from us. So we're going to continue to be understanding of our positions 
If you have short terms, you're going to be taking profit and not feeling bad about it as price continues, right? You don't feel bad as it continues past you. You took the profit, you took it home, you get to get your girlfriend, your wife a, a nice new, you know, purse. Who cares? You're happy now. Your wife's happy, your kids are happy. Price can keep going. But what happens after that point? You need to know when to get back in as well, right? And so these things are really important now because why? Because now everyone's a trader and an investor again. Everybody's buying everything. No one cares about anything. It gets very choppy and gets very difficult when this shit gets going on over here, right? I just want to remind people of last year. This shit over here, it, it's very easy to say, well, this, this shit trended for months. For months. For months. We were on a trend. For months. And nothing was really happening, right? It's... And if it's so easy to just get caught, get caught in this idea, well, okay, well, okay, we're done. So you don't push your winnings, you're taking profit, you don't know how to get back in, you're not taking profit, you're losing it on a short term play because you have shit contracts. Again, don't let the green in success of the market as an average or any of these tickers fool you because again, there's people losing money on the whole way up. They're losing money the whole way. They're not making the right trades. And so you don't want to be one of those. We have to be a step ahead. We are a step ahead, but we can't let that get past us, right? So I just want to make sure because, again, a day like today where I don't, I didn't even trade today. It's really easy to get lazy and to do nothing, to do just nothing and to feel confident about it and be like, okay, well, this is good. This is great. It's more, it's been important that we continue to put the work in and, and understand because, it's one thing that this is going to continue. Where, where, where's our spot? Where are we getting out of this one? Where do we transition? And when do we take the next trade? It's really hard when it's up here because we don't know how fast it's moving, how fast it's going to continue. This whole thing is dictated by where the price opens. Price could open uh, 2% higher tomorrow. And then what? I mean, you're very close to getting me to take profit and just to look for another transition because... Again, you're getting some weird stuff, so it's important to theory to craft some of these ideas. Anyway, let's get out of that mumbo jumbo. We talked about four this morning. This is a difficult trade, but this was not a trade that you could already be in. This is not a trade you could be in. Now, I want you to just look at this daily chart and compare it to, to the Tesla chart. Ford was already doing very well, right? We talked about it this morning a little bit about these tickers that were doing well while growth pulled back. Ford got pushed into the EV side. We're considering it sort of an EV player now. So if you look at the comparison between these two, okay, everything's coming out of this low here. We understand that. Tesla's doing a lot better here, right? It's some good news, China numbers, whatever. Doesn't matter. Everything's coming out of here. Now, you could have got into this back over here, right? Ford was not the same story. You were not able to get into this. You could have put positions on over the weekend. That's fine. But today was really your day. And so we talked about it this open. This over here is very difficult. Price opens, right? Price opens a, quite a bit higher, right? Quite a bit higher, almost 2% higher over here. How were you making this trade here? This is a really hard trade, but it's so important to be able to make this trade. There's two ways you're doing this because this is an important one because this is one of those ones that in hindsight, you'll be like, well, I should have gone into that, but then you'll remember, well, intraday, it was almost impossible to figure out how to get in there. Like if you just looked at a daily candle, then yeah, you would have just bought it and you would have been good. Here's where you just got to not be watching intraday or you need to be very much all over the ticker, right? You enter here at open, you enter at open and you come into the supply and it pulls back. What are you doing in this situation? Okay. This is where you gotta, you need to make a sort of a judgment call. And I talk about it a little bit where you place a stop at your break even, right? At your entry point. But you also need to have some common sense. You also need to have some common sense. Because if you're buying this because you expect it to go to the upside, why are you selling it 30 minutes later? 30 minutes later, if you just bought it, are you selling it because you're worried about it going down? And so that's one of the first questions. In that situation, you need to be thinking, again, I'm not doing hindsight. There's plenty of situations where you get stopped out of here based on your entry. You get stopped out, and that's fine. If you do that, though, that's where you need to be very much watching precisely and say, okay, I got stopped out. But as soon as you see this tightness start to go to the upside, you have to get back in again. And so because you should not be buying this here if you're going to get stopped out here and you're not going to buy back in again. 
That's the that's really the first way to do it is just to be active. You buy it, stopped out, buy back in, push it again. The other way is to be more of the common sense approach. Be like, I, I, I want to be a part of this trade. I understand there's a level here. What you would do is you're putting your stop lower. Your stop would be lower and you don't even watch it. You buy it. You check out. You put it on the daily. You look at other charts and then you come back in the middle of the day and you're up. And nothing matters over here. I'm th there's no making the trade over here and shit like that. I mean, this is lunch and now you're talking, oh yeah, it bounced on the support. That That's not the trade. That's not the trade. It's just not the trade because at that point, it just means that you were sleeping all day. The only reason you took the trade here is because you were sleeping. That's literally, because there's no way no one's bu not buying this candle. Like You have to enter it open and you just need to make a judgment call of how to get back in or not to get stopped out. Right. If it came down, then yeah, you're gonna get out. You're gonna get stopped out anyway. Right. And you'd be buying down here instead. It's important to be able to look at a chart like that, because on in on the daily chart, oh yeah, easy. I would have bought right there and pushed it. The only way you would have done that is not watched intraday. Right. That's the only way. There's been a lot of charts like that where you have to buy it and stop looking at it. It's one of the most it's one of the hardest things to do is not to look at your PL, but it will make you so much money. It'll make you so much money because the only reason you should be buying something is because you have a confidence of what's going to come next, or at the very least, you have confidence of what it's been doing. You understand the levels, the trends, and so that's why you're buying. That's why we do charts. That's why we look at levels so that you can buy something and you can fuck off and you don't have to look at the chart, right? You shouldn't have to look at the P&L 10 minutes after you bought something. If you do, then that means you made a bad trade. If you guys are watching PL all morning, all day, because you entered something, that means you're not sure. And you shouldn't have bought it in the first place. It's like if you go buy something expensive and then you feel kind of shitty after because you're like, why did I just spend all that money on this? I could have just, you know, hung out at home and spent money on something else. Maybe if you go out some night, sometimes I go out at night, right? And I'll spend a few hundred bucks, maybe pay for a friend or two of mine. And then I'm like, Jesus, that was stupid. Could have just kept that money and just, you know, hung out, bought a couple of beers at my place, whatever. Those kind of feelings, that's the worst kind of trading. Don't do that. Only make, make the trade and get out of there. Don't look at it, right? Because you have a stop in there or at the very least, or if you're fucking good at trading, then you know how to get back in, right? You already know and you're not going to be worried about it. That's something to keep in mind because I've seen it. I've seen it happen so many times on these charts where I just know that there's people making decisions in that moment. They're just making the decision in that moment. That's all they're doing. They're, they're going, oh shit, this was a mistake. This was a mistake. <laughs> they start selling and then everyone else is going to buy it because they're good at trading. And, and they just, they have, a, they have some sort of understanding, right? That you wouldn't buy it if you didn't expect it to go up. Same with the sellers over here, right? We, it's all day. Price swings because of instability in our fucking chimp brands right keep that keep that idea in mind because again i think it's that's probably the one of the hardest lessons to learn and the only way you learn it is just to keep doing it and, and to realize that okay once i've done it it doesn't feel that bad it doesn't feel bad not to watch the ticker right it, you, you just let it you let it happen right okay i want to talk about the rad trade a little bit uh let me put it on the daily okay uh, this, this move here, let me put it on back on the other layout. Uh, because again, this is, this is sort of the nature of our market right now. Uh, it's really important. We understand the dynamic between the underlying and the options. It's so important because everything is dictated by it and it's not, it's just, it's accepted at this point because we see it in price still. The, the point is, is that the underlying is the derivative of the options market. Right, that's that's the saying, and that's the truth. Let me put on. Let's go with WBA. Okay, WBA play. We have price turning down. I know I've said this before, but I'm using it for red today because it's important to see that it's more than just the meme economy and everything else. Okay, price just doing nothing, doing absolutely nothing for quite some time. Right, consolidated, but then it didn't even break down or out. Just kept trading on the trend. Knows, uh just liquidity out of its mind and no one can push the price one way or the other. There was no options. There was basically no options being traded in the chain whatsoever. There was maybe a few hundred contracts out there. What changed? Well, we had market makers create a ton of contracts. 
writing contracts, writing calls specifically, market makers start writing calls all at once. What happens to price? Well, all of a sudden you went from basically no options to a ton of options, to options having an exposure larger than the actual ticker itself, the underlying itself, or at least quite a bit, and price gets pushed. The idea of a gamma squeeze. It's very important that the expiration is coming up, that it expires quickly because the expiration is the time at which you need to be hedged for that exposure because those calls could be executed. Now, at almost no time are short-term calls going to be actually executed. They're just going to fall off. They're trading it for premiums, right? No one's actually going to uh, go buy the fucking shares. It's just not going to happen. Now, if you bought something like a couple years ago, you bought it at low point, you probably would do it. That was the whole point of doing it in the first place, but we don't do that, right? This happened, right? Okay, we understand that. Okay, red. Red falls 20%. And this is important because, again, this is the whole fucking market. Okay, same thing happened over here. The same thing happened over here. Not all of not all the retail stores did the same thing. We took advantage of a lot of them because we had an understanding that even though there was some artificialness in the WBA contracts and the way we pushed that, the same thing was happening on a lot of the retail stores where there was a lot of bets coming into those March monthlies. And the reason being is that we knew that the March monthlies were going to have the most options ever in terms of volume and that there was going to be a bunch of new ones written here coming into the close. And even if there weren't, we knew that they were going to need to be hedged because they were expiring. So we knew that the underlying price would at least go up because of the exposure. We just gave it a push, right? And it happened on all of the tickers. It's not just like, I have an idea and I do it. No, the whole market has the same idea. It's just who can get there, who can start the whole thing first, right? That happens. This comes down 20%. What is happening over here? Why did price come down 20%? I don't know, some dumb news and everything else, some offerings somewhere else, everything else, right? Doesn't even matter what the reason is, does it? Because look at price. This sits down here. Do you know what happens these few days here? A bunch of calls being written, a bunch of calls being written, coming into April expiration date, monthly expiration, almost the same, almost the same time as over here, the date line, the date to the monthly date almost the exact same time to the expiration, market makers start to buy the underlying and price starts to get squeezed to the upside. It's, it's going to happen and it happens on every ticker. It happens on every single one. And it's the primary reason why this is happening on the tech side. It's the primary reason why this was able to get out of this consolidation is the amount of calls that are being written over here, betting on price to go up. The bet makes the price go to the upside. It's, it's hard to think about it, but the only reason this is getting out of this whole shithole here is because everyone's betting that it's going to come out of there. Yeah, it's just like saying, well, everyone's buying it, right? But it's on the option side. It's on the option side and they're betting and it causes the buying to happen. It, it's, it's the betting part, again, that is dictating these things to actually happen because they're speculating that something's going to happen and it causes it to happen. It's the catalyst to all of this, and it gets the ball rolling, and it causes more calls to be written, and then more underlying to be bought, and then everyone goes, ooh, look it, this is going up, tech's going up, let's go buy tech, right? Let's go buy growth, it's going up. Oh, now it's an all-time high, and so there's a lot of pluses, but it's important to remember where these things start. It's, it happened again, and I talked about how we did with WBA, we're gonna do it with RAD. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's until, until people try to stop it from happening, where they understand what's happening and then they try to take advantage. And it's not more worthwhile just to go along with the ride. At this point in fucking trading and investing, it makes more sense to go along for the ride, right? You don't, you're not the contrarian and you short the market when the market's been going up for all of its life. So until things stop, they're going to continue it's so important to see that and understand when those opportunities come and, and how things like we, we can see things like uh, BB today going here. Why did this all this thing had sold for so long? Why did it go here? I really I, I really wonder why, you know, did all of a sudden a Blackberry is going to be a good company? Was it a bad company, bad company, make no money? Oh, and now it's a good company. Now it's a good company. 
No. It's just so at such a low point that everyone's betting it'll go up. It's not even people buying it. <laughs> people aren't even buying it. They're just betting on it. That's literally all that's happening, right? It, it's honestly the only thing that's happening in here. There's no one actually buying it. It's it's market makers. They're just fucking writing calls and buying the look at where they had to buy. They had to buy it. 1.30 at lunch. <laughs> they had a 1.30 at lunch. They had to go buy the goddamn underlying because a bunch of chimp brains are out there buying calls that they're writing. And they have an obligation to go buy the underlying, right? It, it, I mean, again, I, I mean, I guess it doesn't need to mean anything to anybody, but it's, it's the only reason why we, we have the price the way it looks right now. And it's because it's really easy to be, if you look on a historical perspective, to look at price and say, wow, price is really weird right now. Trading really strange, right? This is not, this doesn't really make sense in here. The volatility and the way it's, right. It's because it's, the market's trading on a whole different wavelength, right? It's a whole different wavelength. And the more that we understand that, the more we can get ahead of all these moves. And it's important because sometimes price is just coming down and we have to be able to buy it. And that's what we just did because we understood it. We understood that price was coming down. Listen, I mean, yeah, price can come down further and we're saying it in hindsight, but it's because it works. We, we continue to do it. And it's almost like the pullbacks are happening in such a way that it's just setting us all up, doesn't it? Doesn't it almost feel like it's an inside job to have the market pull back so that we can just buy it every fucking time? Does it not feel like an inside job? That's what it feels like. Feels like every time the market comes down, everybody just knows to buy it. What about these dumb candles? Uh, just to give like another example. What about these dumb candles on travel? These overselling? And then everybody knows to buy it and the price shoots back up. How does everyone know to buy this stuff? How do you get these big whips and everybody knows how to do it? Right? It, it's, again, it's not just one person. The whole market's doing the same thing over and over and over. It's a different style of trading, but it's because... Again, it's it's just the damn options. Damn options. I don't know what else to say. It's it's insane. It's insane. Options are supposed to be used for insurance. Now we're out here betting. You get everyone and their mother. Is it better? Is it better? They're not even gambling. There's not even that much risk involved if you're trading tickers that have no real inherent risk, though. Right? You just kind of like okay. Well, I mean. I can literally hit the sell button at any time because I have a market maker that will fill me. You can literally go to the level two book and just click on the bid price and you'll be out of there. <laughs> you'll be out <laughs> instantly because there's just someone always there and they're willing to take that because they get the spread. So what's the, what's the gist? Wealth has just continued to be created. Wealth continues to be created and markets propped up by Fed liquidity. And everyone's going to continue to will is everyone's going to be willing to continue the show. The show will go on. And that's what's happening here. Growth had a rough time. We entered a bear market on things like ARC. The, the inflow didn't continue, but as soon as the inflow continues, what happens? We, we're just gone, right? We're, we're literally have left the station already. You look at ARC, it's just gone. Just, it's literally just going to be gone. It's, you can look at it here and just already know and feel it. Has barely moved here. It barely moved here, but you you just already know where the bets are coming. I posted the ARC G uh, chart as well. It's just going to be gone. It's just going to be gone. What are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? You, you just have to be in a position. I mean, you can look at this and be like, okay, you have time still. But these kind of things, it's it's going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening. So we trade the breakout. Once a consolidation starts, we take profit. We wait for the next breakout. And usually these things line up in such a way that we can always just be in a trade, right? And we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep doing it. That's it. That's it. Let me see the profit section. What do we got in here? Not many, not many messages. LSU plus 718. Another gap up and meltdown day. Was 1600 at open. Wah, wah, wah. I only made $1,000 today, guys. <laughs> Brian with the plus 164 at gym continuing gains. Brian wasn't even trading. He's just, he's at the gym. 
Spoon with the plus four percent. Another nice number. That's what we like to see. Consistency. Just consistency. I mean, I would say again, today is such a weird. Uh, I don't mean weird. I mean it's one of those days that you're not really probably realizing anything, and you're just kind of things are continuing. Sometimes that can be uh, strange to look at option positions. I think JGR mentioned like something like. SAP was up like 2% and then the contract's up 40% on the June monthly. So like something that's actually further out. There's so many examples of that. And I, think I made the example of GE. And I mean, it should be mentioned that when you're buying contracts right now, are you betting on, okay, you can bet on speed, right? You bet you get short-term contracts. You're getting short-term contracts as you're betting on a price in a certain amount of time. But if you're just betting that price is going to be up a certain level and you don't really care how fast it's going, extend your expiration and pick a higher out of the money strike price because you don't care how fast it gets there. You care that it's going to get to that number. And that's where things like the June contracts, uh, those three month contracts start to come in and you can be a little bit more fruitful and, you know, fruity, put those out of the monies on that, you know, they might be like, 10% out of the money, but I mean, you're not betting on speed at that point. You're just betting that it's going to have direction, right? And you're not going to lose too much on your way there. If you're making short terms, now short terms have played paid very well because again, if you're taking this trade, you're saying, listen, if this shit's not going up, then it doesn't even matter. The bet's just going to be off. So you can take things like April monthlies here, right? It doesn't even matter because if it doesn't move immediately, then you're out of the position no matter what you get. Because if you bought June's over here and this shit didn't move, you'd be out of the position. You're not going to sit there for a week and let it go sideways and make no money while you're not losing money. You can put those short-term bets on. Are you putting risky bets on up here? No, because you already missed it. You can put longer terms on because you're betting on direction. You're not betting on speed. The speed already happened. You can do that the next time it pulls back. Right? Um, okay, tomorrow. Okay, the dollar kept coming down. Dollar kept coming down. Now, again, we understand that the dollar is, no matter what it does in short term, we understand that it's the value is lower, right? We understand that this is appreciating because the yields increasing and inflation expectations. Now, again, it doesn't matter if it's going up or down, but there is still that direct benefit of knowing that the dollar is not appreciating, right? In terms of Again, if the dollar is expensive, then think about what it does to equities, right? It's going to make equities, the price go down because it costs more to buy every equity. As long as we know that that's not happening, right? Every time this keeps going up, we understand that, no, it's really pushing down and everyone understands that, then equities keep rallying, right? This will be interesting to watch tomorrow because as Asia opens, they, they have a question still to answer themselves. They've been betting on the U.S. market. Are they going to bet on themselves? And if they bet on themselves, does this cause the dollar to fucking just come down, right? A lot of this is because the money came out of Asia and the like, right? And so money came over this way. If we get to some selling here, then again, that's China. China. It's really important to remember that those Chinese tickers are really good trades if we can get them, right? This was not open on their end uh, today. If... I mean, yesterday, I guess. Today, when those open, these are great trades, and some of these just beg to be bought over here. Some of these just beg to be bought. When you, when you look at some of these, right, PDD, BABA, all, BABA's disgusting down here, but even BABA being disgusting, you're betting on volatility. It's important to remember that the, this, this side doesn't matter. It's the other side. It's, it's the ticker trading on the other exchange that matters doesn't matter over here this is reacting it yes we're, we're trading price on the new york stock exchange it doesn't matter it's it's reacting to over there and based on their market so this over here like it's so close to just saying i bet that this is going to have more volatility this week and next week than it had over here i bet it's going to have more speed that's that's all you have to do and you can sit in that position now and you're actually willing to look for that those kind of trades the billy trade is like a good example of this because we took this trade over here because it's so similar to our growth, right? It's so similar to our trades that it begs to be bought on a preemptive trade. Now, this trade is a good example of 
us trading it and pushing price this way when you look at those other chain stickers they're not the same right they're not the same this is everyone just betting this is this is the same situation this is not underlying price this is betters this is speculation because you can tell this is not how trading works you don't get you don't get a week and a half two weeks of of price action that looks like this right that's all speculation this should be a front runner and a leader to those other tickers so something like jd that i posted here this is an opportunity and we're not talking like dicking around here we're literally talking like 30 percent here right which on options on these tickers is thousands of percent literally thousands of percent you think i'm kidding that's a thousand i that's just that's a thousands of percent that's it i mean that's just what it is so you want to make thousands of percent if those are going to go if you get them now uh yeah yeah that i mean it's again it's up to this to move it's up to this to move but it's already been moving and again some of those tickers just beg to be bought it's all china government interference new selling and shit that's pushing those prices down it's all artificial it's not uh it, it's not real sort of value fundamental technical it's nothing it's just a regulation thing right it's all regulation as soon as that shit goes away this is going to go back to where it's supposed to be going right which is this economy is growing how many percent every goddamn quarter it's like six percent a quarter <laughs> they're going to be all right they're appreciating the, the dumb shit they do with their currency they're going to be propping this price up because they love it so don't bet against it right don't bet against our growth don't bet against anything in the goddamn economy anywhere doesn't make any sense to right i think that's what we got uh what what i would say for uh for tomorrow uh, again it would have been today you would have made the decision but i guess you still have tomorrow likely you get some take profit today on a, some of these tickers that put big points on something like google right is, is google going to continue it absolutely could uh but you can't be you know surprised faced when this starts to take profit tomorrow because someone is going to want to take profit on this somebody bet over here uh we were betting we weren't specifically wanting to buy google individually we you probably got a piece of it through any of the queues or through the leveraged queues like qld you probably got exposure to it but if you did get in there this is when we started to be like okay shit we can actually trade google because it went into the high right so you could start to trade google even those people that bought over here would probably be willing to take some of that profit tomorrow. And so, again, we expect it to go higher. I expect it to go higher. I just posted this chart because I do expect it to go higher. And look, we got an insane day today. But do not be surprised if you get take profit tomorrow. So you need to make a decision. Either you should have taken profit today. Yeah, it's not ideal. But I'm talking about beating yourself, not, yes, the best ideal thing would be to wait and to see because you can't choose the top. But those of you, again, that have like some instability there, take the goddamn profit or be planned for tomorrow if it's going to happen and know if you can hold it. If you entered over here, you can hold through 2% loss in here. You can hold 2%. You're going to be fine if you have some longer dated calls. If you got Aprils, then you should have already been out of here. If you had April monthlies, if you didn't exit this by lunch, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Somewhere in here, you should have been like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> I got to get the hell out of here. So again, if you get short terms, then you're just, you're pushing your luck for no reason. You're going to be, you know how much money you're paying overnight to hold that? You're paying at least a couple percent here. You're going to need a couple percent to pay for that overnight. Easily. Easily. Because you have all the sellers and the take profit, and you need to have as much momentum as this candle for it to continue. Or else it's just going to come back down. Figure out tonight. Okay. More charts tonight, uh, a lot more short-term patterns probably uh, today. I've already seen quite a bit of you. I already got a list going, so be mindful of stuff tonight. If you didn't get to look at all the charts from uh, the weekend, because I post, I always post them at a shitty time for everybody. Uh, no, I won't post them at a different time. When I'm finished working, I'm finished working. I post them. <laughs> um, then take a look at those, because there's a lot, again, uh, I'm really happy with a lot of those charts, so uh, definitely take a look at those, because... Some of them didn't even move today. Just, just my last note here. Uh, some of them didn't even move today, right? And they actually pulled down. And it's important to be able to understand how 
it, it's still good to have that because, you know, it's, it's easy to be like, well, ZS didn't move today. This didn't move today, man. Like, yeah, like I see you got RXT, Google up there. Those were good. But what about these ones, man? These didn't even move today. These are the kind of charts. It's so important to be able to have this and, and to know and to understand what happens with price here, right? Some of you are like, ooh, TWLO. Let me get into that one. That looks good over here. It's got a lot of supply right here. It, there's a ton of supply right here. You got to understand the chart here. But it, it, again, you never get to, you don't get to decide when things move. But what you can do is understand them and understand what's involved, right? And, and to see the moves in motion, like shop, you want to get in shop here. It, it did this not just set you up perfectly for tomorrow? Is this not a perfect setup? You proved that price could come up there again. And you know equities are, are bullish, growth is bullish. Look at the middle of nowhere over here. You got support underneath you. It's just going to be one of these times, right? It's one of these times. So again, you don't want everything to go at the same time. You want to have multiple chances. You just need to know that this is here and it's waiting. It's begging you to go buy it tomorrow at open. If it opens on support, it's begging you to go trade it past here and go into 1200 something, right? That, that's what it's asking for. So keep in mind these charts that didn't do anything today while still keeping in mind those that did and offered opportunities. Uh, it, I mean, it's really easy to fall behind on the amount of charts. You can certainly just go off of what you like and what makes sense to you and what you enjoy for sure. But uh, I would say the repetition is still the most important thing. I look at, you know, <laughs> uh, f unfortunately, uh, a lot of charts every single day. But it's that repetition and seeing this shit that it will be ingrained into your mind. And after two weeks of doing it, there's no reason why. Uh, I mean, that's why it's like most you've been here for a year, but <laughs> after two weeks, it should already be ingrained in your mind when you start to see these things. So that when there's nothing here, you can look at this and go, oh shit, that's a breakout right there. That's a breakout right there. There's some trend line support. I see the, I see the consolidation and then you go, oh, okay. I see the trend in there because if you're not doing it and I know a lot of you like that, but if you're not understanding the, the way in which things move, right, this relative movement that how price is going to move over here. This is the target. This is literally the target because this is the trend that it trades on. Every chart has its own slope, its own, you know, relative price movement. You just can be able to look at that shit and understand it and understand where the levels are, right? That way you can just buy it and then, you know, sit on the beach in Turks and Turks and Caicos, have a beer, enjoy your life, right? That's all, what, that's all we want, right? And then we can all bitch uh, about the New York City tax laws that over $5 million a year it's like an extra 10% or something. Over 10 million is like another 10%. Unbelievable. Good thing I don't make any money. I'm, no, I'm never going to have that problem. 5 million a year? You're insane. A trader making 5 million a year? That's insane. You must work for a, a giant institution. None of us are ever going to have that problem. 5 million, 10 million a year? Fucking insane. <laughs> if, why are normal people complaining about that shit? I had a friend of mine complain about that to me today. I was like, dude, you make no money. You're broke. What do you care? Didn't I buy your dinner last night? What do you care? The fucking, they raised the money on the five. He's like, no, they'll leave. None of those people are fucking leaving. It's the bums that are leaving. Like me. I'm the one that goes, ah, oh, shit. That extra 7% is actually a lot of my money. It's the bums like me that don't really make that much money that want to leave. Five million? 10 million? They haven't even looked at their fucking bank account in years. They don't give a shit. They don't even know how much they really make. 5 million a year? Get out of your mind. Tax them more. They fucking, they deserve to be taxed more. Anyway, that's all, folks. Enjoy your night, your evening, your afternoon, wherever you are. I'll see you in the morning. Have a good one.